up guys, John Anthony for John Anthony Lifestyle. Here I am today again with Nicholas. We are outside in the rain wearing sunglasses. I'm sporting my fancy little Ubermensch shirt, which means Superman as a translation. Coined by the esteemed Friedrich Nietzsche on here, who's my favorite philosopher. He's behind the idea of nihilism, that there's no God, no purpose, no afterlife, no subscriptions to political or social ideologies, and it leads to existential despair, but it can be turned into an empowerment model. Rise above, fly away into the sky as the Superman, and create your own values and meaning. Hurrah. All right, so the topic of the day, we're going to cover a whole bunch of really important stuff here in rapid succession in these coming videos. Um, we really want to talk about approaching and fear of approaching and approach anxiety. And yes, I know there's been other videos about that on my channel. I know there's been lots of videos around the seduction community and seduction world about this topic. Um, but really, I still get this question every day. In my mastermind forum, it comes up a lot. On my live programs, it comes up, up a lot. Guys are always emailing me. How do I get over this fear of approaching? How do I come to grips with all these negative thoughts I have when I want to go talk to a pretty girl? Okay, and this, the, the name for this that goes around in the community is approach anxiety. All right, and for those of you watching, if you think, oh, I already know how to deal with approach anxiety, it's not a problem for me. This is still an interesting discussion instead of videos we're gonna do, and it's not just gonna all relate to approach anxiety, okay? So if you think you have approach anxiety handled, or whatever, stick around because we're going to cover a lot of important stuff. Okay, so where does this fear of approach come from? I think Mystery, who wrote the book Mystery Method, describes it best. He said, imagine in evolutionary times when there was maybe 20 of us in a tribe. Okay, maybe 10 of those are female for the sake of argument. Now, some of the women are too old to reproduce. Some are children, okay, not of reproduction age yet. And the, of the girls that are available options, some of them are going to be ugly, okay, and are, are otherwise less desirable. So maybe you're left with two or three options. Now, if you were to attempt to court a woman that was taken uh, by another man, since there is no law and order, etc., or consequences, this is jungle rules for most of our evolutionary development, um, that man or alpha person in the tribe or another tribe, whatever the person she's involved with, could kill you. Okay, and then your genes do not get passed on. And the primary goal of our, that evolution has designed us for is to reproduce and pass on your genetic code. Okay, so if I actually didn't, if I didn't have a vasectomy, which I'm coming up on five years of this October, uh, I would say I impregnated those, one, it's 1,052 girls now, I would be spreading my wonderful genetic seed all around the, the globe, okay? But to my mother's... <laughs> Horror and delight, I have not been doing that. Horror because she's, she doesn't like the vasectomy thing. Life is, life is sacred. And I'm gonna make a quick point. The, uh, it's interesting about in the genes that genes like take thousands of years you know, to evolve and mutate and kind of change shape, but like civilizations evolve like in a matter of you know, hundreds of years. Like, like look how, how like how Internet's around like 30 years. You were talking about, about talking about this just earlier. How like audio had to be like you know played with bands behind movies like in the 1960s, right? Or something. I don't know exactly. You said that, not me. So what happened is like our, our genes design, are designed to protect us in these you know old tribal situations. But if you're living in a city that has more than a hundred thousand people, yeah, yeah. you're safe, man. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Okay. So the other the other big consideration, it, not just of being killed by that guy that's that's with her, but if the girl rejects you, now the word quickly spreads amongst the tribe, and the other girls see you now as lower value, and you may never reproduce. Okay, but in our modern world, as Nicholas stated, there's something like eight billion people, over eight billion people. Okay, let's say four billion women. Okay, me having slept over a thousand girls, that's like a drop in the ocean. Okay, I'm not going to exhaust the pool of women in the world. It's even extremely difficult, even with lots of volume of approaching to come anywhere near to scratch in the surface of the volume of women in your own city okay unless you live in like a farm town we have one client <laughs> he lives in a city or a town that's like two thousand people so maybe like a thousand women so i've banged more girls in my lifetime than than women that exist in his town right so that that's where it becomes a little bit more problematic but for the vast majority of you watching <laughs> 
this is not an issue that you're going to have an unlimited pool of women, but you still have this antiquated circuitry, this outdated programming that's going to cause you to feel that fear. Okay. So that's where this fear comes from. You want to talk more about, as you were talking about before, how you've tried to like burn down cities. <laughs> so if you actually look at it, look at demographics of the entire population, I love looking at statistics and shit. So um, if you take like, if you say 50% of population is women, out of that 50%, you know, a certain percent are old, certain percent are, percent are too young, and then out of that small percent that's left, you have like, what, um, like small percent, even small percent is hot. So that leaves you around 2% of the entire population is sexually compatible hot girls. It's probably so, than that, but yeah. It, it's, it's, around, it's like the, the really hot ones. So what happens, if you, if you multiply 10 billion by 2%, it's like 20 million, right? Is that correct? No, it's, it's 200 million. It's, it's, it's a huge number, like you, there, there's endless hot women everywhere and, and like even, what did what, what I say? Woman. Woman, what's the difference? There's endless hot woman, it's plural. Woman, ah, okay. You sound so Serbian right now. Well, I've been living in Europe for like seven years, so my American accent is totally gone. But it um, doesn't matter, it's where the hot women are. Um, yeah, I've, I've lived in places which are like 80,000 people, it's like a town and if you try hard enough, after like two years, you can actually kill your reputation in a town of 80,000 people. Trust me, I did it in two towns, if not three. But like, in reality, like, I'm crazy. I, I push things to the limit. Like, if you actually, if, unless you're actually actively trying every day to approach every girl you see, when, like, like me when I was a total noob, um, then you, that's not gonna happen to you. Yeah. And, and like, even if you live in a small fucking town of a thousand people, you can just get in a car and, and you're most likely 30 minutes away from like a one million people city anyway. Okay, so Mystery also used a really good analogy about a pebble being in your shoe, okay? If you had a pebble or a rock in your shoe, you acknowledge that it's there, okay, but you ignore it, all right? And the same applies for when you're approaching girls. You feel that fear, you feel these negative things creep in, but you do the approach anyways, okay? When you have that pebble in your shoe, assuming you can't remove it, you're not just gonna sit around your house all day, right? And be like, oh, I can't fucking go to the grocery store. I can't go to the gym. There's a pebble in my shoe. I don't wanna feel this discomfort, okay? You acknowledge it, it's there, you do it anyways. Even after banging a thousand chicks, I still feel that there. It's still in my antiquated circuitry, okay? And it's still like, oh, like when it's time to approach, like I still feel this fear. I just conditioned myself to ignore it. And we're gonna talk about in a follow on video how, number one, your odds of getting that girl are zero percent if you give in to the fear and you don't approach. And number two, you can have what we're gonna to refer to as like this pivotal, pivotal experience where you were like this close to not approaching a particular girl. You forced yourself to do it, you barreled past the fear, maybe even, you even went in a week or, or vastly suboptimal, but you forced yourself to do it and it worked out really well and you had that girl in your life for months. Okay, so we're gonna go over that. So we're gonna explore both with some stories and some related concepts to this. But for those of you watching, I want you to stop giving into that fear, okay? And I think we're gonna talk about another video, but just touching on the three second rule. Do you wanna explain that? Uh, it's very simple. If you approach within seeing a girl of three seconds, that means your mind will not have time to give excuses. If you see a girl and you're waiting more than three seconds, you're just thinking about it, that's when your mind's gonna have time to give you excuse after excuse after excuse and think of all these impossible scenarios. So you're like, getting beaten or something. But like what happens is like if you, if you see a girl and just automatically be like, she's cute, I have to say hi to her right now, your mind will not have time to like put, put yourself down. Yep. Yeah, so in these fallen videos, we're gonna go into these stories, how we were like really close sometimes to not approaching a girl. It worked out where she was in our life for months. We're gonna go over how guys are trying to marginally justify like, oh, well, the fear's here. Let me just like dispel it by thinking in my mind, oh, I'll do the next one. Or let me just dispel it by thinking, oh, she probably has a boyfriend anyways, or she's probably gonna reject me anyways. And whatever the long list, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this stuff. It's easy to just throw out a, an excuse and then, oh, I'm busy right now, I think. You know, whatever it is, and then you just, get rid of all that fear and you, you almost feel this relief. Okay, but you know deep down, you could have had a shot with that girl, okay? And then the next time, and then you're like, oh, I'll do the next one. Then the next time the girl comes along, a, a different attractive girl, the fear rushes back in and you're like, oh, and it's excuse time again. It's time to list all the negative scenarios. It's time to doubt your worth. And this is what a lot of guys that are trying to get good at this are stuck with. And this kind of stops you at the very beginning. It's almost like a non-starter. Until you solve this problem, you are going to continuously be succumbing to the fear and it's going to win, and it's going to cause you to stagnate or 
not get anywhere near the results that you dream of with women. Okay, so we'll get into those follow on topics in the next videos. Please like and subscribe if you have not already for my new videos five days a week, soon changing to seven days a week in about a week's time, maybe nine or 10 days time. We're gonna be, it's gonna be daily videos, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time on a daily basis. Okay, and I'm, I have a new editor that's coming on board, even better than the last one. And the videos are gonna be very well produced. We're gonna get some montages going from all our adventures on the tour of the United States. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to do this series here. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.